Hello everyone. So today we will see some basic electronics part one and its objectives are first to define the basic components of electricity. Second, to recognize the three electrical classification of materials. Third, to compare and contrast between AC and DC currents. Fourth one, to explain the concept of grounding. And the fifth and last one, use Moore's law and Watt's law to express the relationship between the current, voltage and resistance. So here, electricity can be broken down into there's four parts, subparts. First one is uh, electric charge, voltage, current, and resistance. Common in electricity, in TV, a battery, and lightning. We see the charge in common. So there are uh, broadly two cast of, uh, two parts, uh, two types of charges. Uh, first one is negative charge, and another one is positive charge. So negative charge is called electrons. So the negative charge is called electrons. The smallest amount of electrical charge having the quality called negative polarity. Negative symbol, negative polar, that is electron. Electrons orbit the center of atoms. Another one will be proton. Proton is a basic particle uh, with positive polarity. Protons are located in the nucleus of atoms along with neutrons, and they consist uh, both consist in nucleus. Uh, particles so which have a neutral polarity, that is known as neutron. So, another one. so how we see the configuration of uh, here hydrogen and helium? So this small silver type uh, ball, tiny ball, represents the electrons. And this big ball, red ball, represents the say, protons. And uh, this blue one represents the neutron. So you can see in hydrogen, this one is the electron and this one is the protons. And electrons is revolving around the orbit of protons. And the one is helium. Here, Z represents the atomic number that's equals to 1. And mass is equals to 1 gram. And another one is helium. Helium has the atomic number of Atomic number of two and mass of uh, four gram. And here, this consists of nucleus, this uh, neutron and proton. Consist of the two neutrons and two electrons, also the protons. So here, the electrons revolves around the nucleus. So we know this was in the next slide. Electrically, all materials fall into three basic classifications. And what are they? Conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. So now let's talk about the conductors. I have one valence electrons. Materials in which electrons can move freely from atom to atom are called electrons, uh, conductors. So what are valence electrons? Uh, valence, uh, valence electrons are nothing but the electrons present in the outermost shell of any atom that is known as the uh, valence electron. So in general, all metals are good conductors as they have the tendency to flow, of the, uh, they have the tendency to flow the electrons. The purpose of the electrons is to allow electrical current in order to minimize the electrical resistance. Another will be insulators. So what are insulators? Insulators are nothing but the electron, uh, the atoms having the eight valence electrons. It means that uh, the atoms uh, have the valence electron filled with eight electrons. So materials in which electrons tend to stay put and do not flow easily from atom to atom. These are known as insulators. So insulators are used to prevent the flow of electricity as it resists the amount of flow of electrons. Uh, insulating materials such as have examples, glass, uh, rubber, plastic. They're also called dielectrics, meaning that they can store charges. And one of the uh, commonly known as dielectrics are capacitors. Capacitors. Uh, which must store electric charge. Semiconductors. So what are semiconductors? These are the uh, materials or the atoms having the four valence electrons. That means uh, it have four electrons in the outer motion of any atom. So materials which are, and these uh, materials are neither conductors nor insulators, and therefore it falls under the category of semiconductors. So uh, common semiconductors, are, some of the examples are carbon, germanium, and silicon, as they have the uh, four valence electrons broadly used in the components like transistors. So the symbol of charges is represented by Q, which stands for quantity. And it's a unit is Coulomb, represented by C. So here the one Coulomb is equals to this amount, and it comes to protons in the dielectric. Next is voltage. So voltage refers to the potential, refers to the possibility of doing work. Or any charge has the potential to do work of attracting a similar charge or repulsing an opposite charge. So the symbol for potential difference is E, for electromotive force. What is electromotive force here? So electromotive force is nothing but the resistance uh, within the batteries is known as electromotive, uh, electromotive force. That is uh, sometimes known as EMF of the set. So now let's proceed on to the practical unit of potential difference. So in practical, we use the symbol V for potential difference. So one volt is a measure of the amount of work done in required to move one uh, coulomb of charge. So you can understand the statement in this way that the amount of work done in bringing a charge from infinity to a particular point is known as potential difference. And one volt is the amount of measure of work done required to move one coulomb of charge. So next will be the current. So what is the current? A 
when a charge is forced to move because of the potential difference that is v current is produced so here in conductors free electrons can be forced to move with relative ease since they require little work to be moved so here yeah, here is your it states that the electrons present in the conductors are freely uh, movable and they can be what you say uh, moved with a little bit of force provided by the potential difference and because of which the electrons flow and which results in the flow of current so so current is a charge and uh, charge that is in motion so it's also be uh, stated as definition as uh, the motion of charge depicts current so the more electrons in the motion the greater will be the current so it is directly proportional that is the current is directly proportional to electrons the more the electrons won't be current so next will be the amperes so amperes is nothing but the unit of current so current indicates that intensity of the electricity in the motion the symbol of current is i stands for intensity and is measured in amperes the definition of current is i that equals to q by t so what does this mean q by t so here when uh, where i is the current in amperes q is the charge in coulombs and t is the time in seconds so it actually tells the rate current is uh, current or ampere is nothing but the rate the charge flow uh, uh, by time so it gives us the uh, rate at which the charge flows in a particular uh, cross section that gives us the current per ampere so now let's proceed on next uh, slide here now ah, here now what does one ampere mean that is one ampere simply means one coulomb per second when the units are uh, are taken as unity or one that's known as one ampere so one ampere when a cross sectional when in a cross sectional area the electrons uh, one elect one coulomb of electrons flows in one second or in per second that is known as the one ampere or simply we can uh, put the formula like this as we know that i equals to i equals to 2 by t so when we uh, uh, when uh, when the one coulomb of charge so let's uh, make a one when one coulomb of charge flows in a cross sectional area for one second this time in seconds and that will be one second one second then this rate is known as the one ampere that's the definition of the one ampere so it is given in the figure also when the amount of charge that passes a point in one second is one coulomb and that current is known as one ampere you can see there's a flow of electrons that is opposing in the direction of current slide uh, so next slide will be on the uh, on the resistance so what are resistance resistance uh, which opposes the flow of electrons or which opposes the flow of current termed as resistance the fact that a wire can become hot from the flow of current is evidence of the resistance so uh, the statement tells that sometimes you must have seen that wire becomes hot so what's the reason behind it so there's a reason of uh, there's a concept of uh, there's a property of resistance because of this resistance the wire becomes hot uh, hot sometimes so conductors have very little resistance as the conductors are very very good um, what do you say materials or um, to flow the electrons so they have the very less resistance insulators have large amounts of resistance as uh, they are not uh, so much, their electrons are not freely movable so they resist the more current therefore uh, they have a large amount of resistance next slide will be on ohms so ohms in practical unit of resistance that we, uh, we use ohms uh, we use ohm and it is designed by the greek letter omega is uh, depicted in this symbol ohms and it is written in ohms and is depicted by symbol this so a resistor is an electronic component designed specifically to provide resistance sometimes resistance is also important in a circuit another is closed circuit so as uh, everybody knows that uh, whenever the current flows it flows in a uh, closed circuit it doesn't flow in an open circuit so in, applic in, uh, in applications requiring the use of current electrical components are arranged in the form of circuit and the circuit is the closed uh, path of current flow circuits here yes? an open circuit current can only exist where there is a conductive path or the closed path in this circuit here in the figure here the amount of current is zero ampere why is zero ampere because points a and b are away they are not connected they are, there is a big difference therefore it's be, uh, it became an open circuit because of it the electrons uh didn't able to flow from point b to a and hence the electron uh, and hence the electricity didn't able to flow next one is circuit is a load on the voltage source so the circuit is uh, where the energy of the source is carried by means of the current 
to the various components. So battery is the source since it provides uh, the potential energy to be stored. The circuit components are the load resistance. They determines how much the current source will produce. Next is direction of electron flow. So here, <coughs> the direction of the electron flow in our circuit is from the negative side of the battery to the load resistance back to the positive side of the battery. But the current flow just opposite of it. That it flows from positive to negative. And the electrons flows from positive, uh, negative to positive. So inside the battery, electrons move to the negative terminal due to chemical action. That's known as electrochemistry. That, uh, that's a part of electrochemistry. So maintaining the potential across the leads. Next part will be electron flow in a simple circuit. So this figure depicts as how the electrons flows in a simple circuit. So here it is. Here the electrons are flowing. So here the electrons arrived, arrived from negative terminal and it reaches with the positive terminal. When the amount of charge that passes a point in one second in one coulomb, that is known as one ampere, that we have seen above side, in the other side. So now let's uh, talk about the kinds of current, that is AC and DC. So first one is DC, that is direct current. So what are direct current? Circuits that are powered by battery sources are termed as direct current. Here the polarities are same as it can't be changed. This is because of the battery maintains the same polarity of output voltage. The plus and minus size remain constant. It can't be changed. But it's uh, just the opposite case of um, alternate currents. Now, characteristics of a DC current. So, here first uh, uh, properties, it flows, uh, it, uh, the charges flows from um, only one direction. But because uh, its polarities can't be changed, therefore it flows only one direction. Second one is the fixed polarity of the applied voltage, which are characteristics of DC circuits. Next one will be AC current. So AC is alternate current. An alternating voltage source periodically alternates or reverse in a polarity. That means in a certain period of time, its direction changes. The resulting current therefore periodically reverses in direction. The power outlet in your home is 60 cycle AC, meaning that the voltage polarity and current direction go through 60 cycles of reversal per second. All audio signals are AC also. Now let's uh, compare between AC and DC. Here's the AC voltage and here's the DC voltage and here's the AC voltage. So AC are fixed polarity, DC, and AC are reverse polarity. I mean uh, that its uh, polarity can be changed. In DC, charge can be stored uh, in DC. It can be stored or vary in magnitude. That's it's uh, steady or varying magnitude. That means that its value can be uh, constant or its value can be constant. Or it may varies with a constant uh, value. But in AC, varies in magnitude between reversible and polar. But it's, uh, it changes, its magnitude changes. CD value cannot be stepped out or done by a transformer. Use of electrical power distribution. Electrode voltage for tube and transistor amps. Input and output signal for tube and transistor amps. Easier to measure, easier to amplify. Heating effects are same for both the AC and DC current. Next slide will be on. Many circuits include both AC and DC voltage. What are they? DC circuits are usually simpler than AC circuits. However, the principles of DC circuits also apply to the AC circuits. What is impedance? So impedance is resistance to current flow in AC circuits and it's simple is Z. The impedance is also measured in ohms. It may be also measured in ohms. Next topic is grounding. So in wiring of practical circuits, one side of the voltage source is usually grounded for safety. For 120 volt AC power lines in homes, this means one side of the voltage source is connected to a metal cold wire pipe. For electronic equipment, the ground just indicates a metal uh, chassis, which is used as a common return for the connection to the source. Next one is common symbols are names for the ground in electric circuits. Here it represents earthen, ground, and chassis. Now, ohms law. Ohm's law, the amount of current in a circuit is dependent on the resistance and the applied voltage, especially I equals to E by I. Uh, here, ohms are here. If you know any of the two factors, E, I, and R, you can calculate the third one, or anyone uh, can be fine with this formula. Current that's equals to I equals to E by R, voltage E equals to I R, resistance R equals to E by. Next topic is there's a graph plotted between voltage and current so uh, with the ohms uh, ohms law we figured out that voltage is directly proportional to current so what is proportional to current voltage for constant resistance so it's uh, current versus voltage this plots the graph it's constant for voltage and current 
and here current is inversely proportional to resistance of a constant voltage you can here you can see with as the maximum the value of electrical current is the minimum the value of resistance and maximum the value of resistance is minimum the value or minimum the value of electrical current so they are inverse, uh, related inversely to each other next topic is power power is how much the work is done over a time one watt of the power is equal to the work done in one second by one volt moving one coulomb of charge since one coulomb a second is an ampere so it can also be written as p equals to e multiplied i laws of powers it's basically this one and i hope that you guys like the session and and if you have any query uh, just comment in below and till then goodbye